Today, guys, we're going through the top tips for your water engineering career. Stick around. G'day guys, Ed here with EngGrad, your insight to the water engineering career. So let's get straight into the video with my tip number one, learn to be brave. By taking those opportunities to travel, by taking those opportunities to work on those remote pr projects and maybe having to spend a week or a few days away from your family. Being brave and saying yes to the opportunity to give a presentation maybe to your company, give a presentation to a university about your career and about the things you've learnt in water engineering. Saying yes to the opportunities to create something new for the company. Be brave and it will reward you in return. Some of the biggest, most daunting things I've done in my career is move interstate, move from my hometown of Adelaide to Perth, and then I did it again to Melbourne. And it was scary. It was fun, but it's scary and it's a daunting thing to do because I didn't know many people in those states and I had to make new friends, which is hard when you're in your mid twenties. But I did it anyway, and I don't regret it. In fact, I'm so glad I did because I got to meet new people, I got to meet new clients, I got to work on some really, really cool projects. And in the company that I was working for at the time, they really respected the fact that I went and did that, that I was brave enough to go and do that by myself. So when an opportunity comes your way, take the leap of faith, you won't regret it. My key tip number two, now, as you know, learning the technical part of your job is probably the most important aspect of your job. So this particular tip is to learn the programs that you're going to be using as a water engineer. Some examples of that are things like AutoCAD and Bentley, specifically water gems. Those programs you will need for certain projects, certain modeling projects that you work on in your career. Knowing how those programs function and how to use them is important because you will probably need to use them in, in projects that you do. But not only that, in the future, maybe five, six years down the track, you're going to be potentially leading teams. You're going to have to teach people how to use the program and you're gonna to have to understand how that program works and the limitations of that program so that when you're leading a project, you can understand what to say to the client, what information do you need from the client and what information you can give to the client. What are the limitations of the program and what can the program do for them and how long it's gonna take. You're going to need to know all that and the best way to know that is to learn how to use it. Using these programs as well, you'll be able to identify patterns in your design. For example, you might be working on a sewer pump station with a rising main. And the rising main might be over a flat terrain. And you'll think in your head, well, I may need a barometric loop or potentially even surge vessels, which you'll have to implement on the site. So be able, you'll be able to identify those things early and tell the client early, maybe within the startup meeting or early into the project. And that's really powerful information. Going to tip number three now. Tip number three is travel if you can, if you have the opportunity. If a company comes to you and gives you the opportunity to travel internationally for a week, a month, or potentially even a year, or even around the country, take it. You won't regret it. I've been lucky enough to travel around Australia with my job, and the first company I worked with, I was able to travel to different cities, and I got to know the people in those offices um, and work with those people on a day-to-day -day basis and I really got to know them in Perth and also in Melbourne. So when I returned back to Adelaide, I knew that those people and I had that network for me, working for me if, essentially if I needed help with anything, if I needed a bit more information or I knew a specific specialist on a, on a certain element, I knew where they were and I could easily pick up the phone and give them a call. Um, expanding networks when you're traveling is a huge plus. Tip number four, constantly work on your technical skills and your soft skills. So easy ways you can do this are reading books, reading journals, reading textbooks, reading Australian standards, as I said in my previous video. Reading those items, you will learn more over time. You're not gonna remember everything. No one expects you to remember everything, but you'll know where particular information is so that maybe you have a project where you need to look at certain fittings about how the pipe works going together for a, an MSCL uh, pipeline. You know that you've read the MSCL textbook, the ASCE textbook, and you know there's certain areas that talks about fittings and which fittings are most suitable for certain environments. 
So you go, I remember reading that. And then you go to the textbook, you read the section and you go, oh, this is really good information and I can use this in my design. Otherwise as well, you can take courses. I've taken multiple courses in my time, my career. And honestly, I don't use all the information out of those courses. One of the courses was I don't use at all but it was still a good experience and you still i still remember that information or parts of that information so when someone starts to talk about it for example stormwater engineering which i did a course in i can understand what they're saying and i can relate to that and i can join in that conversation and i can add to that conversation and don't forget you can do this on the job as well so maybe there's a meeting coming up and you're you're a junior engineer maybe you can suggest that you lead the meeting that way that's working on your soft skills about giving presentations maybe about how to talk the engineering talk without getting too complicated and just building your confidence in that in those soft skills space and the last tip tip number five and you've heard me say this before is get involved that could mean socially with the business going out for dinner on, on a Friday after the after a long week it could mean signing up to one of the organizations in your country a water organization and going to an event speaking to other water engineers or other leading engineers in that field it could mean making your own event within the company maybe you're a graduate and you want to start a group or you want to create an event for those graduates those social aspects will give you a big step up in your career and I get it some of us are introverts and that kind of stuff seems daunting I mean me I'm an introvert and I find that stuff kind of daunting but it's good just to make the effort you don't have to make the effort all the time every week but every now and again and people will recognize that and they'll appreciate it and when I say get involved get involved with your team as well talk to them say hello when they walk in the door be a human being around your colleagues and, and talk to them ask them how their weekend was and ask them how they're going and things like that it'll be good for your working environment as well working around people that you know more about and you're potentially friends with makes it more enjoyable but also your boss will appreciate it as well don't forget that the best teams are the teams that can work well together and your boss will know that so when you start making efforts to getting to know your team and really involving yourself they'll appreciate that as well guys we're at the end of the video i hope you found it helpful as always don't forget to subscribe and like and ding the notification bell so we can share this with as many engineers as possible i hope you enjoyed yourself and i'll see you guys on the next video cheers